Thank you for joining us. It's pleasure. A, it's, a, it's, pleasure. A, it's a pleasure to host such an expert in ultrasound and critical care. Um, my first question to you would be, um, should fluid responsiveness uh, always trigger the administration of fluids? Definitely not. Um, so I think that whenever people talk about giving fluids, the first question that should be asked is not, is this patient fluid responsive? The first question that should go through everyone's mind when they're about to give fluids is, does this patient actually need fluids? Is there a circulation hemodynamic problem that can be fixed by giving fluids? So before you give fluids, ask yourself, does the patient need it? And only then think about, should this, is this patient fluid responsive? Uh, there are a number of different fluid responsiveness techniques that we can assess if mm -hmm. a patient is fluid responsive. Is there a preferred technique that you prefer or there is a one be the best technique that we can use? I think, as you say, there are lots of different techniques that you can use. Uh, passive leg graze, some form of mechanical ventilation hold. You could be guided by actually giving a fluid challenge itself. I think the best fluid challenge uh, an assessment for fluid responsiveness is one that is consistently used in your department. So whenever you, because we work as a team on the intensive care unit, so it shouldn't be the individual preference is what should be the team approach to fluid challenge, fluid administration, so on and so forth. So for example, in my hospital, we tend to use the passive leg raise as our default assessment of fluid responsiveness. The evidence supports it as being very flexible. It's useful for both the mechanically ventilated patients, but also spontaneous breathing patients. Um, so that's what we tend to use. However, you need to do it properly. So if you read the papers by Xavier Monet and Jean-Louis Tabou, who described the passive leg grace, they will tell you that in order for it to be useful, you need to do it properly, as you would expect. And properly means that you are not actually meant to touch the patient because you're stimulating them. You're meant to be moving the bed itself. Unfortunately, that detail is often lost when it comes to day-to-day -day practice where clinicians often say, okay, we're gonna do a passive leg raise, the medical student is free, that <laughs> nurse is free, lift the legs up. That's not quite how the test was intended to be carried out. If you look at other tests of fluid responsiveness, for example, the N expiratory hole, very simple tests, etc. Um, but obviously you need a patient that's connected to a mechanical ventilator um, that ideally is not taking any spontaneous breaths, so on and so forth. So the best test of fluid responsiveness is one that can be carried out properly and the team consistently apply it. Okay, thank you. Uh, does a positive response to fluid administration preclude fluid overload? I think that's a very that's a very interesting question because as I've talked about in my lecture earlier, we are starting to move away from fluid responsiveness as the be all end all of giving fluids. And what I mean by that is we're starting to um, we all, we've always known it, but I suppose we're more proactive and it's coming to the front of our brains more readily. Is this whole idea of, is this patient going to be fluid tolerant? I.e., what is the harm of me giving fluid? What is the harm of me getting this fluid responsiveness test wrong? Is it likely to put this patient to pulmonary edema, severe congestion, so on and so forth? So we moved away from the heart itself and the circulation to also looking at the other organs to give us a better idea of would this patient tolerate fluid administration and what's the margin of error I can afford. Again, we already sort of knew it because we talked about the mini fluid challenge. So instead of the traditional four mils per kilo of fluid challenges, people are administrating 100 mils and see, assess. And then if you think, okay, a bit more, a bit more, a bit more. So just because you're fluid responsive, I don't necessarily think it precludes congestion per se. Thank you. Thank you so much for, uh, for answering the question. Absolute pleasure being here. Thank you.